In the last video I showed some preparation for this clock. In this video I'm going to show the assembly. Hey guys, Jacques here. So I'm going to go over the assembly of this clock here. Follow me, let's do it. As we get started, I have this gear with the maintain spring, this little spring. If you feel this is too complicated, you can do the simpler version with just with just this gear, the ratchet here with the gear, and then the 12 teeth gear on top. Talking about this spring, I'm just going to show you how I made a tool and how to use that tool to help shaping that spring. I made this tool to help in shaping the spring put the piano wire in the hole here. I made a bend 90 degree so it holds it in place and then it's easier to put it in a vise but do it in hand and then round and round and round three quarters of circle make a mark that's going to be the length of the finished spring that mark here and then shape that to hook up on the screw the other end and just bend it with a second pair of pliers piano wire is tough that's for the maintain spring and one more thing that we're going to need is the rewind gear this screws in here there's a barrel. Now the assembly. I'm going to start with the front frame. I'm going to have two of those that are will be used to hold the face that will come in the front. I'm going to use four rods with the acorn nut on them. Let's do some building. Then I'm going to place the side frames. So I have this frame here with the stop to prevent the rewinding backwards. And then there's going to be the maintain ratchet. The other side frame. And then I'm going to put that drum gear. I have a little four millimeter spacer here under the bearing I have a 11 and a 16 millimeter spacer here tapered end is towards the bearing next the rewind gear there's the same 16 millimeter spacer here no spacer in the front I'm going to take the ratchet out of the way then I have this gear there's a little two millimeter washer on this end nothing at this end then I have the front escapement frame now we can put the back intermediate frame I think it's back frame I call it we need to line up bearings and the holes when the back frame is in you can check there's some a bit of play nothing is binding if you pull the string it should spin next thing that comes in is the escape wheel should still spin now if it's the first time you build this clock you might want to check put all the frames put this last frame and check that it's still spinning right I'm going to put the anchor on the Anchor, I put a 2mm washer here and a 2mm here. 
I can then adjust exactly the position of the anchor with the escape wheel. This is the back escapement frame. This comes up. That's where the pendulum will hook up. Before I do that, there's two 16 mm back spacer. There's also a 2 mm washer on the back of the escape wheel here. You can line up the old axis. Okay, now I can put the last frame, the tapered side goes inside, that hole lines up with this. This stud spacer and nut. That's the sucker, that middle frame. And then four nuts. Those nuts, that cylindrical part comes at the back. Okay, now we can give it a try. Make sure it's working before going forward. So I'm going, I'm going. I'm going to do a quick try of that, that clock at this point. I just have the pendulum. I just put a zip tie here to hold it together. The one thing to make sure is when you hook up the pendulum, make sure it's centered here, not on the side like this or like this, but in the notch. So I'm going to put that pendulum rod I have nothing at the other end for this for now. It's just going to go a little bit faster. I'm going to start with a fairly small weight just to see what happens. To level it. Put the tension slow because of the maintain spring so you don't jam the spring. So it's almost working with 850 grams. So that's good. Seems to be working pretty well. Can test the rewind. The rewind prevents me from going backwards. Going backwards would overstrain the maintain power spring. The only thing I have to unlock the lock, let it go up, and then I can take the rewind key out. Now we can finish, put the hands and the front and the clutch and have a complete clock. To finish the clock, I'm going to remove the front frame. I put the back frame on some blocks. It's going to help uh, reassembling. You can push those screws back. Okay, so we're going to install the pants. I have that piece of piano wire. I'm going to push in the front knob. You can glue it if it's too loose, it needs to hold. I have the hand already on the gear. I need to make sure that the hour gear is spinning on the minute. Here. You can put the minute hand, then the knob, putting a 2 millimeter washer on the back here. Best to do it this way. Once it's on, it's easy to push. Just leave a tiny little bit of play. Now we can assemble the front frame. We can put the 639 gear. I have a little washer, 2 millimeter washer here. 
go, make sure it spins. And then the hands come in there with the same 2mm washer, remember? So, that will work. And now I can secure the hands. Make sure the piano wire doesn't stick out, it could jam the gears. This one. <laughs> now I need to put the clutch up here. This clutch here. Make sure the two piano wire in place. And then I have this part here to hold at the end. Always just enough play just so. Last thing, can I just those screw in the clutch to add tension if needed. And test that the clutch is working as it should. Front face is finished, can come on this. It's going to be a little tricky part and that's why I put it on blocks is to have this gear come under and connect to the gear under here. Put the front frame assembly and kind of slowly bring it in place wiggle it a little bit now you can see that that gear is where it's supposed to be. So bring the, the frame at an angle Kind of wiggle it into place and then align all the gears and the bearings. Sometimes a little wiggle on that gear, make sure it meshes right. Check that all engage. So and then when you're sure that everything is in place, you can remove the blocks and slowly push. I do one corner at a time. That's why you want those rods to move as free as possible. Makes it easier when you get at this step. Okay. No binding, it's all good. You can put this back. You can put the fray the face. And then that one. Center the face and put the nuts back. So that's the fully assembled clock. There's one more thing to check. The one thing to check is that the end of this piano wire doesn't jam with this gear. If it does, you can either shorten that arbor or add a washer at the front. Okay, so it's time for another checkout. I'm going to take this weight, that's about two kilos. Takes more resistance with the front face and the hands and everything. This should work well. Again, hook it up and put tension slowly. It winds up the maintain spring. And check the leveling. Until you have a nice even beat. Set up the time and then we can start adjusting the pendulum. So the best way I found for now 
is start with a pendulum that's longer than what's needed. I mean, one meter rod is plenty, and then put the put the bottom part with the bob all the way up. So I have all that extra space that I can leng lengthen the pendulum. And then I start like this, check it out, I time one full rotation of the escape wheel, that should be one minute. So with the pendulum too long, the one rotation is going to be longer than one minute. I can cut the rod about that much, a little bit shorter than the screw, and try again until I get just below the one minute, and then I can lengthen to get back to the exactly one minute. And then the final check is to let it run like overnight, 24 hours, and then go from there. And then a last check. I like to hold the, the clock so I don't put it out of level. Then when I want to get the key out, I just need to push the lock until there's no tension and then I can pull the key out. Here's clock 24 ticking along. And with the clock at this height, it runs 28 to 30 hours. And then I did this little piece, call it double. And then you can do a hook like this, and when it's installed between the two escapement frames, then you can double the string, put a pulley here. I have a pulley like this that I did for the Huygens, Christian Huygens clock. That makes your clock go twice as long, you need twice as much weight, but then it will go for 60 hours, you can get up to 60 hours. So that's it for this project, it was a long project, but it was also a good, nice experience, learning FreeCAD, all the possibilities with the gears, and tuning up a clock that really works well, that functional since it goes over 24 hours. I'm going to upload the files to my mini factory and they'll be available over there for a small fee. Hope you like this project. If you want to see more please like, subscribe and I'll see you in next video. Thank you for watching. Bye.